Right, let's do this. Let's do this thing, baby. Woo! Hey, what's going on, guys? Talk Norris City here, back for my predicted 11 slash preferred 11 ahead of this Wednesday's game against Stoke. Hope you guys are doing really well and enjoying all of the videos on the channel at the moment. A big thank you, as always, to all of the support. It has been absolutely brilliant, and I love you guys. So let's get straight into this video. Um, yeah, pre preferred 11, obviously a lot of changes from the Man City game um, and a similar kind of team to what I've been putting out in previous videos. But in goal, once again, Declan Rudd. I think he's been absolutely brilliant since he's come in. I think everyone, no one's got an argument to say that John Ruddy should be in goal. Um, I think the best days are gone for John Ruddy. That sounds really bad. Um, but I just think Declan Rudd's a better goalkeeper. He's, his stats are better. I think he looks more mobile. I think he's a better shot stopper. I think he's more commanding of his box. And I just think he's a better goalkeeper. So that's why he's going in there. At right back, uh, this is a position that is kind of under a big competition at the moment because now we've got either Pinto in. We've now got Pinto, Wisdom, Whitaker, and Martin all fighting for that right back position. Um, but I'm going to go with Andre Wisdom. I think second choice would be Pinto, but obviously I don't think he's fully fit at the moment. Um, we need to get him up to match speed. I'm not sure how we'll do that. Maybe a few substitute appearances, maybe a few under 21 games. I just think we need to bed him in a bit, get him in a few training sessions before we throw him in what's going to be a very tough game against Stoke up against some really decent players. And Wisdom has been fairly decent this season. He had a bit of a tough start. But since then, he's looked really solid, uh, and I kind of like Andre Wisdom. So he's going in at right back. The defensive pairing of um, Bennett and Bassong, I don't think that goes under any question at all. Russell Martin is not a centre back. He got absolute, he just got like sent for a hot dog. I think that's how Seb Ward uh, described it. That slide tackle on Aguero, what even was that? That was like watching me and Six aside just having a good time. What was he doing? He just went mad and got nowhere near the ball. And we've seen that from Russell Martin for quite a while. He's not a centre-back. He's decent at right-back. And I just don't know why we play him at centre-back. Maybe because he's captain and he thinks, uh, Alex Neil thinks he can command the back line. I just don't know. Hashtag Russell Martin isn't a centre-back. Um, Left-back, Martin Olsen. I think this position and the left-mid position is going to be under a bit more question when Matt Jarvis returns from fitness. But at the moment, Olsen definitely uh, at left-back for me. Now, right wing, Nathan Redmond. And I really can't believe that Nathan Redmond is coming under so much scrutiny from Norwich fans. I think Nathan Redmond is a fantastic, fantastic player. He's a winger. He's obviously going to be inconsistent. We've seen that from the best of our wingers down the years. Inconsistency plagues most wingers. I mean, look at Raheem Sterling, arguably rated um, one of the top wingers in, in English football at the moment. He's not consistent each week. He didn't score goals on a regular basis for Liverpool or Man City. He didn't get assists on a regular basis. But Nathan Redmond has the ability to change games like that. And he's one of the only players who can do that in this team. He has real quality. And I really do just think Norwich fans need to get off Nathan Redmond's back. He's still young. He's still got tons and tons of time ahead of him to learn. And I really do hope he learns his trade at Norwich City because Nathan Redmond is going to go on to be one of this league's good, great players. And I really think it's unfair for him to be... To for, for fans to be giving him a stick. And I understand the argument that the Premier League isn't a league to be learning in. But at the end of the day, Redmond has clear ability. He's a top scorer, for God's sake. I mean, come on. Redmond goes in there for me. Um, and I just really like Nathan Redmond. I think he can change a game. Another couple of positions that are under a lot of competition and probably the most congested position we have is the cent central midfield pairing. And this is the, the area of the pitch that's probably been changed around the most this season. I'm going for Gary O'Neill and Vadis Adidra Foe. I have been so so impressed with Gary O'Neill this season. I think considering his age and no one really expected him to, to be playing Premier League football, we just thought, oh, we'll chuck him on the bench and he might make a few appearances. But he's been like a pivotal player for us this season. He's locked down on that midfield on many occasions. Gary O'Neill's just been wonderful this season. And I think he's been better than Malumbu and Dorans uh, for quite some time now. So he goes in there for me. Vadis next to him, I think he's really starting to show us Norwich fans why we paid four and a half million pounds for him. I must admit, I thought his Norwich City career was over, um, but he's just reignited it. And what a man, he's hard working. And the weird thing about Vadis is he's not particularly quick. He's not particularly tall or strong, but he just does everything right. And like, 
He, he somehow beats players, and I don't know how, because he's not overly strong. He's not quick, as I said, but he just gets past players, and it's really strange, but it works nicely. Um, so that's really cool, and I'd like to see Vadis start once again, because he's been really good for the games he's played for us this season. Out on the left wing, our player of the season by quite some distance, Robbie Brady. The man is an absolute fantastic footballer. I think how we got him for 7 million is ridiculous. He is worth in this current market, I would say, upwards of 10 million to 15 million pounds. And I'm not over exaggerating here. He has been performing consistently for the whole season. The only player in this Norwich City team to be doing that. Um, big respect to Robbie Brady. He gets the left midfield position. Uh, I'm playing a 4-4-1-1. So in behind the striker, I'm going to be putting Wes Houlihan. I think he adds so much creatively. And I know Stoke like to play with a fairly narrow formation. So although Wes Houlihan won't necessarily be dropping off defensively, he can shut down areas in, in that sort of Stoke, in the Stoke territory um, and give a bit of breathing room for Gary O'Neill and Vadis to drop deep if needed to. He sort of just fills in that hole. Otherwise, Stoke are going to be playing in front of us quite a bit and then able to sort of ping balls over the top of the defence and stuff. So I think Wes Houlihan, although he's going to be putting that team to create things rather than defend, he also could have a big part to play in terms of shutting possession down, shutting space down and winning the ball back. Uh, so I think that'll be a big... This is going to be a big game for Wes Houlihan. I'd like to see him up his game a bit because I haven't been overly impressed with him over the past like 10 games. Uh, and then up front, I think... I, I would be very surprised if people are going to be arguing this. I think Dia Mercy and Bacani goes in there. Although, to be fair, credit where credit's due, I thought Cameron Drone was excellent against Manchester City. Uh, he was unlucky not to get a goal. I thought he, he worked the channels really nicely. He worked very hard. He chased every ball down and he held the ball up really well. Um, it was one of Cameron Jerome's best games for us this season. And Cameron Jerome, to be fair to him, has scored goals um, this season. Not many, but he's contributed quite a bit to the team. Yes, he's missed a few cities in there. I don't think he's Premier League quality, but for what we've got, Cameron Jerome's done really well. I just think Dia Mercy and Bacani, as I've said every single week, is a more rounded striker with, with a more of a footballing brain. I'm still not sure if this language barrier is creating a bit of a communication issue. Uh, it doesn't seem that way. But I cast my mind back to the Bournemouth game where he made his debut and it just didn't seem like him and Wes were connecting too well. But I've never played professional football. The language barrier must be tough for any team to deal with. Um, and I'm sure they're creating like little words and little phrases to, to be able to link each player up. So that's my predicted 11. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Let me know if you agree with it. What plays would you take out? What plays would you put in? At the end of the day, this video is more of a discussion uh, and I'll, I'm always really happy to see you guys commenting in the comment section below. Uh, a big thank you to everyone who's watched. Leave it a like, share it about on social media, tell all your family, tell all your friends. This is the Norwich City fan community online and we're making moves. Thanks for watching and see you later. Peace out.